rolling and go. If this trend unfolds the way it has um, in conjunction with the history of the de-evolution of societies in my lifetime, the former Soviet Union and all the stories we were getting out of that and then later on the whole Croatian and Bosnian thing and well if you if you are a student of these skills and self-reliance you want to learn about the progression of societal breakdowns because there's certain patterns that evolve and uh, as we follow those patterns here at the school is we're also looking at what's to come. You know, what is the most likely outcomes of, uh, of these things that are unfolding? And some of them are kind of recovering, which is nice for now, right? I would say land navigation is gonna be a more important component to your day-to-day -to -day tools. And the reason why is um, we rely so heavily on GPSs and, and before GPSs roadmaps that we get plugged into the written printed word and then we look at street signs and we count miles and quarter miles and look at mile markers instead of being fully engaged in our landscape and once those things are taken away seriously how many folks actually have maps in their car everyone that I know in Maine who spends time in the woods has a main gazetteer, right, at their disposal, and it's usually tattered and marked, and it's got highlights and notes, best fishing ponds, where to, you know, get the blueberries, you know, all of the things you would want to put on a map to develop your knowledge of place, and that's the place you need to be, is you have to reacquaint yourself with your landscape. Now, instead of looking at the quickest route to the grocery store, or to avoid commuter traffic, you're looking for the nearest source of fresh water coming out of the ground from some spring. Or maybe you're looking for firewood. These things may seem ridiculous and maybe in the context of an urban environment, improbable. But they're really components of your life-sustaining systems taken to their base level, to their most basic foundational skill set. Fire for light and warmth, right? You're depending on electricity on a grid that has not always proven to be infallible. Ice storm of 98 here, not uncommon for two to three weeks in the middle of winter, no power. But it wasn't a big deal because everyone in Maine has wood stoves and oil, or there's always redundancy. Navigation is more than just waypoints. It's more than topography on a map. Navigation is plugging your senses into the landscape and feeling the wind shifting and realizing that it shifted from coming out of the south to coming out of the west by noon and then by sunset, it was coming out of the north. You know tomorrow's gonna be heavy dew or frost in the morning and chilly temperatures. So in a sense, navigation in a more organic, more ancient structure, gives you more information than where you are and where you're heading. It gives you information about the conditions as they unfold, often as accurate and as in advance as modern meteorological lab uh, models, computer models. And when you get fooled, it's because the birds got fooled or the insects got fooled or actually all of them got fooled. We had a very strange event the last few days the rain was coming out of the north. That rarely ever happens. And so when it does, it's an event. Even the trees moved differently in a north wet wind. It was almost like they were struggling to swim upstream as opposed to the northern, western to southern winds coming out. And the animals acted a little differently too. It's almost like they were bothered. They didn't have the same feeding frenzy and then calm before the storm as they normally do. And that's all part of navigation. So learn north. Learn wherever you go to determine which way north is. And suddenly you're going to be aware of how the tree limbs grow much more vibrantly and numerously and, and more horizontally out on the south-facing side of a tree. 
but it has to be a tree either standing alone or taller than every other tree. And then navigation teaches you how trees, when they grow together, grow almost as a single organism with their solar panels facing the south. Once you have all of this, once you have oriented yourself to your landscape, the more important pieces aren't how to get home, it's how on my way home am I going to find the most bounty in the way of my needs. It might be cattail season and gathering the flour to thicken stews. It might be a run on alewives. These are fish that are so numerous you can dip net them here. That's a lot of food to put away and if you salt them and dry them correctly they could last for years. Or maybe it's just a nice drive to appreciate the sun as it slides down out of the view from us as you know it chases itself around Sorry, the coyotes. So we have all of this energy of land navigation and we've reduced it to a map and a compass, which is a beautiful art form and it's challenging and fun. But there's so much more out there. Hopefully you heard that owl. See you on the trail, folks.